I taught college for 22 years. I've heard all kinds of questions. The big ones are usually easy to answer. It's the little ones that usually create the biggest hurdle. And it's like, uh, I feel stupid asking that question. I don't want to ask that question. I shouldn't bother Ed. I shouldn't bother some, one of the sales staff. Always ask the little ones, because the little ones cause the biggest problems. So as we're working tonight, you're more than welcome to put up your hand. If I don't grab it right away, I'm just finishing a thought. But I can get back to where I'm going if something comes up. Uh, I got a question for you. Uh, how many of you are fabricators, C countertop fabricators? How many of you are tile installers? Majority. Uh, anybody do a lot of architectural work outdoors? Uh, pools, pool coping? No, mostly tile installing. OK. Um, very interesting. Uh, how are you doing with this world of porcelain and natural stone? Are you, are you having to install a lot of porcelain? How are you doing with it, OK? Or is it difficult, or? Well, there are some issues last that they like soldering bits. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm having kind of like problem with them. I mean, it's not a big problem, but when they're really thin, they break when you're cutting them. Like yeah. Really oh, the thin, you know, like the Neolith and those yeah. types of things? Those, yeah, you, you, the thin veneer porcelain, we have a whole, whole special set of tools for that. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, there's Ruby makes them, Malvolite makes them, Sigma makes them. Yeah. Uh, special tools for him, but still it's not the first time that I try it with the regular blades. Yeah, yeah most, most manufacturers are supplying training, just like we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, but they told me that I had to go to Seattle to be able to take the training. Wh which like, company is that? Pentel? Um, I don't remember exactly the company, uh, the name company anymore. Okay. To go to Seattle, like, yeah. Okay. The reason I bring up porcelain, and we're going to go over it, we have, we have a, a sealer for porcelain and quartz. But that's going to be a little bit later. So most, what, what we're finding, though, is on most properties, it's not all just natural stone. And a lot of them, it's not all just porcelain. You have to be able to handle both materials, right? Uh, dry treat was originally formulated uh, by an engineer in Australia. It was formulated for sealing bridges and wharfs in saltwater environments. So it was specifically designed for very porous materials, which are all the natural stones that you work with. Uh, what type of sealers are you currently working with now? What brand? 511. Miracle sealants? Yeah. Aquamix. Pardon me? Are you the Aquamix? Aquamix? Yeah. Anybody else? Bulletproof. Bulletproof, that's uh, Stone Tech. Yeah. Anybody? What I use the Tiger. Tiger Rager. Tiger Rager. Oh, for enhancing. Oh, yeah. yeah you have an enhancer. We have an enhancer that we're going to be going over tonight, too. Um, what do you all think about sealers in general? Do you like working with them? Is it a pain? Okay. But the, the different. We do make an enhancer. It's called Intensifier, uh, and this is where this this is where we start to go. I'll feed off what you're talking about, and we'll we'll do it. Uh, this is our enhancer. The difference between like a a, a Tiger Ager is it's got a bit of a resin in it, so it's the, the color sits closer to the top. This is an impregnator, so the color actually goes into the stone. So a lot of people are using this as their uh, uh, supplement to a Tiger Rager. The only thing you can't do with this is you can't color it, where with the 10X products you can add colorants, right? Uh, in general, let's talk about our sealer and what the difference is. Um, there's a couple things. There's some of the, you may have to stand up. We may have to walk around with this. Um, sealing. What you need from a sealer is you need it to repel water and repel oil, right? Yeah. And not make a mess. This is just a, a grout cup. This is just cement. I'm going to move to the front for most of this. Um, grout, you know, is the most porous part of your installation. It's the biggest problem with your installation. So this is what you would expect from any sealer is the ability. Can you all see even in the back? Can you see that bead of water on there? Do you want me to bring it back to you? It's be a little low. Okay. Here, let's go back. I'm going to do this a couple times. I can't do it all the time because uh, it'll slow us down too much. But you expect it to beat up, right? You expect the water to beat up. You would also want oil to beat up so that you can keep it clean. 
Now this is what's important. Our sealers are breathable. Same grout cup. I'm going to put water in it. So our sealers are not coatings. They're not topical sealers. And I'll, I'll do this in a couple of spots back. Watch the water. Can you see the bubbles? Yeah. Now, did that happen because the, the thing is porous and you're blowing air? It's because our sealers are 99% breathable. They allow the air out. For an installer, what, the reason you want it to be breathable is so all the moisture from your thin set to your dry pack, your grout, you want the moisture to be able to evaporate out. You don't want a coating that will trap it. So watch the water. Now I'm going to leave this water in here the whole time we do the class. This is, this is sealed. It, well, if, if, I didn't, if I didn't put a sealer on here, the water would just flow straight through. Watch the water. OK, so what we got, first of all, we have a sealer that is breathable. So it's not a coating, which is important. The next step is it is a true impregnator. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing in the industry. And again, I'm just going to talk about um, what the dry, this is the dry treat difference. This piece of concrete was sealed, and this one wasn't, the one with the blue on the top. OK? Our sealers are 50% active ingredient, where the other sealers in the market are between 5 and 8%. If you've ever worked with the other sealers, have you noticed sometimes that it gets cloudy when it gets on too thick? That's the sealer load. It also gets sticky, right? That's the carrier. With our sealer, I put two coats of sealer just on the top face. Okay? The first day, it only goes in maybe a millimeter or two. Over the next 28 days, it continues to migrate into the concrete. We then took these and put them in a bath of blue dye, and the water evaporated up. Okay? On the one that wasn't sealed, it goes all the way to the top. It goes all the way through. For the one that was sealed with dry treat, the blue dye stopped at how far our sealer actually went in. And which sealer is that one? This is, is stain-proof original. If you're sealing terracotta, stain-proof original. If you're sealing limestone, stain-proof original. If you're sealing grout, stain-proof original. Yeah, this is our number one seller. Yeah, I had a problem by, by the long beach. Mm -hmm. That's efflorescence. Uh -huh. yeah. Our sealers, well, here's what happens with efflorescence. Because it impregnates so deeply, let's take the blue out and turn it into white. Mm -hmm. What efflorescence is, are you all familiar with efflorescence, the white material that comes yeah. to the surface? What efflorescence is is soluble material. So when the water evaporates, it brings the salt to the surface. And that's what you see. You usually see it in the grout joint because the grout joint or the outside surface is the path of least resistance. It's, it's the most porous. By sealing it with a true impregnator, which is what we make. These aren't penetrating sealers. These are impregnating sealers. By sealing with it an impregnator, we get the maximum depth. But this is also what gives the sealer lo its longevity. We're here tonight talking about being a dry treat accredited applicator. It's, it's an alcohol-based sealer, and the technology is called a modified silane. The difference between this sealer and other sealers in the market, this one chemically bonds, other, mark other sealers mechanically bond. You know if I took a box of springs, like car springs, and dumped them on the table, you know how they twist together? That's how other sealers work. So the first one tips into the capillary or the hole, in the stone, and they all form a chain. And it spreads out laterally, and it also stacks up. The impregnation is maybe a millimeter on most of the materials that you seal. Now, with uh, dry treat, the molecule is 400 times smaller, 
and it actually goes into the hole or the capillary and lines the side of it. So what's going on is we've got a permanent chemical bond. So not only do we have the impregnation, it's a chemical bond instead of a mechanical bond. Um, the most famous uh, other type of sealer would be like a Teflon. Teflon is a brand. It's called a fluorocarbon. Um, again, remember, we're not talking about coating. So when you use our sealer, if you put it on, it doesn't change the color. It doesn't change the surface. It doesn't change the coefficient of friction. The stone is going to look like exactly the way the stone looked like when you installed it, unless you're using the enhancer. So the difference, you've got a mechanical bond, you've got a chemical bond. So what does that all mean in terms of the impregnation? Our sealers will last for 15 years. Your clients will not have to re reapply it for 15 years. That's the big difference. When you, when you look at the bottle and other companies and other sealers, it's, it's back to the performance. How long does it last? It's Can you use it outside? The only way you can have mold and mildew resistance is with a biocide, which is um, microban is sort of a famous biocide. Yeah. You want to stay away from that because they're actually toxic. So um, the whole here, mold and mildew need a place to grow. Well, if I'm providing the porous surface with no place for water to get in, there's no place for mold and mildew to grow. So legally, we can't say it stops mold and mildew. We're providing a, a dry installation. Yeah. In other words, so when you seal, let's say we're sealing a shower and you've sealed it correctly, and you've got all the grout sealed and it's natural stone and it's all sealed, it repels water. There's no place for the mold and mildew to latch onto, except for like soap residue, but that then just scrubs away. The whole, when you see mold and mildew, it's because it's a, the environment is wet. It has a place to live. Yeah. It does. It like you don't see a lot of mold and mildew on the west side of a house out here, but you'll see it on the north side because they're damper. You know, the only reason I'm asking is because sometimes you know I have to go ahead and uh, do some like uh, repairs. Let's see. Yes. And sometimes they, instead of like doing that the right way, they use like uh, hattie factor on the back. Sometimes it gets like really wet. Okay. And they and they start like. Mold and mildew starts growing from there. Okay. So you use like uh, 511, but it's still. Uh, well, I, I, again, if you're going in and doing a restoration and you know there's mold and mildew, we make a cleaner. It's called Stone and Masonry Cleaner. This is our newest cleaner. This will, I can't say kill, uh, this, <laughs> will, this will lift out yeah. mold and mildew and the staining from mold and mildew. You know how it leaves a green stain, brown stain, and sometimes red? This stuff is incredible. This is a pH neutral peroxide. We'll get back to that. Let's stay with the impregnation. So we've got a breathable sealer. It truly impregnates. The reason it lasts 15 years is because of this impregnation. As the stone wears, as the grout wears, it's still sealed inside. Now, what's the accredited applicator deal all about? By being an accredited applicator and the 15 year warranty, Dry treat warrants that the sealer will last for 15 years. In the case of stain proof, that it will repel oil and it will repel water for 15 years. You will not have to reapply it. That's interior, exterior, residential, or commercial. Your responsibility to us, all we ask of you as an accredited applicator, is do it correctly. If you put on the correct amount, and put it on correctly, which we're going to go over tonight. We warrant the science. We're warranting what's going on in here. It is not your warranty. It's our warranty. You're just agreeing to do the work correctly. You're working as our agent. Bonanza, it's not their warranty. They're the supplier of the material. The main thing that we're doing, the other main thing that we're doing here tonight is you're meeting me. Because I am the backbone for you. I am your technical support. The staff here, as they're learning about it, they're going to be really sharp with a lot of the questions. Remember, it's questions. Don't worry about asking questions. And if, if, if I don't know, I'll get back to you. Most people in this industry will say, you know, I'm not sure. But they'll know somebody to call. 
So a lot of this tonight is your introduction to me so that you know when you get on the phone, you say, hey, Ed, I'm working on this project. You know who you're talking to. Okay, so it's an, so hello. Uh, but the, the whole idea is, is to be comfortable working with this and know that you have full technical support. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Audience? Yeah. Who likes the idea of sealing and not having to deal with it for 15 years? Does that sound like a good idea? Why is that? Why is that? Does anyone know why it's not yeah, because We don't want to go back to, to do anything on the houses. So it's time and money. money. Why? So it's, it's time and money. It's money. Money. So you spend the money to save the money. That's the idea. And also, we're, we're providing guarantees for our jobs and our products there and our usage. Yeah. Yes. So we. Go ahead. Does that work on every type of porous stone? Any type of porous material. Concrete, Concrete. yeah. Everything. Everything. Uh, vertical or, or horizontal. Just run the code. Uh, but no, that's okay. It is a two code process with this one. Uh, well, I done it uh, like probably seven years ago. I mm -hmm. did a big house on uh, Black and Yellow, like 4,000 square feet of, of uh, pharmacy. We use it. We use a spray bottle. Yes. We spray the whole, the, I mean, like, uh, they say like 25 square feet at the, at the time. Mm -hmm. We wipe it off. Mm -hmm. And then 10 minutes after, we do the second second coat. When we apply it with the sprayer, you see the, the sealer start bobbing up. Yes. It's making bubbles. It's, it was sucking on. Yes. Like that. Yeah. With the other uh, sealers, you don't see that. You just see right. the, the wet surface on, on everything. You don't see if it is. Uh, Actually, okay, have you ever gotten any callbacks or any problems? Two years ago to change a piece that it was broken, you don't see the, the, the ground not even stain on anything. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so everybody hear that job. Seven years ago, 4,000 square feet, sealed it, followed the instruction, no special training. There's not an easier sealer to use. The, the bottom, there's the bottom line. There's nothing easier to use. It's very easy to handle. It doesn't tack up. It's just, it's, all I can say is there's nothing easier to use. I can sit here today and say, you know, the best thing about dry treat, you're not going to get any callbacks. It means nothing to a lot of you today because you're just meeting me today. But we now have a seven year testimony. He didn't get a, he didn't get a callback. So it's important the, to our clientele that you make a lot of money. And the way you make a lot of money is by not wasting your time. And so what we try to do here is to provide tools that you use once and you don't have to worry about it. And I, I, and I want to know when there are products that don't work that way that you buy here. And so um, I think this is a great product for that purpose. Great testimonial. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you'll all be able to come back uh, on our one-year anniversary next year when you're looking at new products. And you'll have a lot of the same kind of stories. So this is a high performance product. It's about 15 to 20% more expensive than some of the other leading sealers, not the cheap, not the cheap price leaders. Now here's the next question. How many of you have a separate line item when you're bidding for a job, have a separate line item for sealing? Does anyone include sealing in the price oh, or is it extra? No, no, no. No. You include it in the price, you include it in the price. Everybody else just includes it in the price? No. Every, how about everybody else? How do you do it? This is important because we're here to help you with your business. And who's including it in the price? I do include it. In the price. Yeah. In, the in, price. A, in the price. But have you already, have you adjusted? Go ahead. Yeah. Sometimes the, the time suppliers, they, they, they provide the, the sealer. Yes, that's going to happen. That? The, the, the time, yes. they give them the, the sealer, so whatever it is. Okay. And that, that's going to happen with our seal a lot. We sell through tool suppliers, builder supplies like uh, Bourget Brothers and uh, Larry's Building Materials in Ocean uh, down south, but then also like Walker Zanger, the high-end tile showrooms. So lots of times, you'll see the sealer come to the job. The reason you get the job, we list you on our website as an accredited applicator. So you become part of our family. Your, your company is going to be listed on our website. So you'll be getting jobs from all different arenas. People are going to say, where can I find an accredited app? Hey, where? And I, I can send them to the website and show them uh, how to find you guys. So that's very important. The, 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 here's the thing I want you to be careful of with uh, throwing in the sealer 
for your job. The, the, you can lose a lot of money because it's not so much the price of the sealer, it's your labor. The cost of your labor is very expensive. So if you're doing it as a line item, all you have to do is on your bid, you can put sealer, include labor in the price of the sealer, and your client can either accept or reject. But this way, you should add it on or build it in to your price. Make sure you take care of yourself financially for the time, because to correctly seal, clean and seal, does take a lot of time. Okay? So we've got breathability, we have impregnation, and we have sealers that aren't going to change the color. This is a very porous paver. Can anybody, I can't really tell which side is sealed and which side isn't. So this is how you do a water test. You, you don't just splash water all over the place. You place a drop of water on the tile. One of these sides is sealed and one isn't. I honestly can't remember. Okay, now I can start to see. This one's sealed, this one isn't. It's getting darker. I don't know if you all can see it, if you want to walk up. Um, the way you do a water test is you put a drop of water on the surface and you let it sit for 15 or 20 seconds, okay? You don't wipe off the water. You wick up the water. Wick it up. And you'll see that's the side that wasn't sealed. This is one of my favorite demo pieces, and I'll show you why. You can't really see where the line is, right? But watch. See where the line is? Plus, plus the dirt. So there's the line right there where it's sealed and unsealed. So one of the things that you're going to do, and we're going to do this during our, uh, as I'm applying sealer, you're going to learn how to make really good samples for your client. Because if you take one of their pieces of stone and put sealer on half of it and not on the other half and give it to them, they can do this. They'll have fun with it. They, they, it's a very important for you to be able to give your clients a really good sample so they know what they're buying. Okay? Let's start. I'm going to put on some sealer. We'll come back to some of these other toys. But I want to put on sealer because I want you to see how easy it is. And go over some of the tools. Most of them are available here. And we'll start with stain proof. Now, the stain proof smells. It's alcohol based. I've got limestones. I've got some concrete that we're going to enhance. And the reason I'm going to put the, do it now, early, is so that you can see what it looks like when it dries out, okay? So the first sealer and the first tool that we're going to work with is stain proof. Let me get... Okay, on, on uh, coverage with stain proof, on a polished marble, 150 square feet per quart. And you get both coats out of the court. We'll have all these forms for you. But the reason we've asked for your email information, there's a lot of paperwork we could have handed out tonight. It's just too much for you to cart around. So what we're going to do is I'll email you a lot of this information. Um, if we are sealing terracotta, like a paver, like we mentioned Saltillo, coverage is 40 square feet per quart. Most of the limestones, a couple of these limestones that I've got here are going to be about 70 square feet per quart on average. In general, when you're, when you're the retail, it's okay if I talk about the retail price? Retail on this is 86.75 a quart. Trade is usually buying at a discount. So in general, when your client asks you, well, okay, you're, you're telling me about this high performance sealer, what's it going to cost me? In general, the cost is $1 a square foot retail for the sealer. There are other sealers in the market that are much cheaper. Here's the difference in price. Let's say sealer B. Uh, if dry treat is $86, we'll take one that's $42.50. You can buy sealers all day long for $42.50.
how long do they last? How long do the other sealer, when, how often do you have to re reapply another brand of sealer? One year, two years, three years, anybody? Three years? Every year? What about in the back? You guys aren't talking. How often do you, do you, do you usually think you have to reapply sealer? Outside. Let's say outside. Six months? Two years? Okay, so let's be gentle. We're gonna do we're gonna do two years. So year one, 40, 40, what did I say? 4250. Year three, 4350. Year five, 4350. Year seven, 4350. That's just for the sealer. That's not your labor to clean. Right? Seal, the labor to seal. It's still gonna still gonna take a lot of time. Stain proof original. 8675 retail, year one. So, oh god, 8675. 8675, year 15. This is the cheapest sealer on the market. Now will it prevent the salts coming out from Yes, that's what the impregnation is. Remember I said if you switch the blue to white, as long as the installation is sound. What, sorry, what do you mean switch? No cracks. Uh, the blue, if, if, you, if the, on the impregnation block, if this was white yes. instead of blue, that would be the soluble salts. The dye is soluble. So the water, the water can get, will, the, you know, the breathability shows that water, air will go through. When water evaporates, it's a gas. The mineral, in this case, the mineral is blue dye. What we're talking about is soluble salts, which is an efflorescence, which is a mineral. It gets caught. So Won't get to the surface. If something, we do a lot of restoration of, of, of properties that have already effloresced. Once you do the repair work, fix all the cracks. If you put our impregnator in, what happens as the sealer pushes in, it actually pushes some of the salt out. So the way you do, and this, this is where, again, we help you with your businesses. If you're doing an installation, you're doing a restoration, and it's for efflorescence, what we recommend is that at the end of your contract, you have uh, three visits, one a month for the next three months because you never quite get the efflorescence all at once because you're uh, to, to avoid the callback. So what happens is you do your, your uh, restoration and go back a month later. 85, 90% of the efflorescence would be gone, but there might be some areas where it's coming back a little bit. You go back with a vacuum cleaner and a dry brush, brush it and hit it with a little bit of sealer, spray it with sealer. Then you come back the next month. Just include this, again, this is your time. It's, it's like, ah, oh, no problem, I can stop by. But if you're up in the Palisades and the job is in the Hollywood Hills, that's a problem to just stop by. So always make sure that you take care of yourself. By using the best tools, you will get some of the best work. More importantly, your clients are going to tell their neighbors. Neighbors are going to come over and see the patio or see the, the outdoor kitchen. They're going to say, God, why does it look so good? Well, they're going to be on board with you because we have a website that is as technical as you need it or architects need it or designers need it. It's very homeowner friendly. So once you recommend, this is the sealer we're going to recommend to do your deck with or we're going to redo the kitchen countertops. We're going to recommend that uh, we use Stainproof Plus. They can go online and say, oh, that's what Marco's talking about. He's talking about using dry tree. Okay, so quickly. I want to use some stain proof. What we like, and um, uh, you can use synthetic pads or you can use um, lamb's wool applicator pads. This is for doing countertops and smooth areas. This is a lamb's wool applicator pad. They also come in synthetic. And Daniel, you're going to be. We have, we have some of those. You have some of the lamb's wool applicators. The, the, the synthetic ones work just as well. Here's the idea. If I go to apply sealer, what do a lot of the companies say? Get a bottle, get a rag, right? Well, first of all, look at the footprint of my rag. Here's the next thing when you use your arm. Thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. How many of you guys do this? Pour it out and spread it around. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> okay, you do it with a sponge. Well, this costs eighty-six dollars a quart. Your sponge. Your sponge. Your, your sponge. Your sponge when you're done is worth forty dollars. Okay. Now you can take a sponge. <laughs> you can take a sponge and slice it and make a pad. You can take something like this, staple it to a block of wood. There's no substitute for a Lamswell applicator pad. Here's the reason why. If I'm using a sponge, I'm doing it wrong because sponges take away, they don't apply. What's nice about this is I can put sealer on and I can walk. Come back. Why not just brush it on? Because you just made the motion. If I'm brushing, here, here's the brushing. I can, never get it, I can never get it on evenly, and I'll be using too much sealer. You can use a roller. I don't, mostly outdoors. Yes. When you're doing like on top even, even, with a, even with a brush, if yeah. I was to take the sealer and make an X in the middle of the tile with our sealer and then put the rest of it on evenly, you won't see that X. Our sealers, you will never, ever see the overlap. So I could, I could make a crooked line in this, this space. And let's say it's a polished marble floor. I could, seal ha I could seal half of it today, come back two months from now, clean the second half. You'll never see where I stopped and started. That's what's really important. The liquid is not the sealer. It's got 50% active ingredient in it that comes out and gets deposited on the stone. This is stain proof, so this is going to smell. It's alcohol based. Now, these uh, Lambswell applicator pads are synthetic pads. They were designed for sealing, um, for applying floor stains on a, f a wooden, uh, wooden floor, and you walk back and forth. So these applicator pads come this big for doing a nice big polished floor. You can use a sprayer for large area. You were talking about spraying. You can't use a trigger sprayer. This is the smallest one you can use. You use a pump top, or you can use a regular Hudson sprayer, which we have here too, you know, the one with the hose that you pump up. The idea of using our sealers it should look like the morning dew. Now, I know I'm from the East Coast, so I'm used to it. You don't see a lot of morning dew out here unless you're working out on the coast. But you know, out on the coast, where your car gets that little layer of, of moisture in the morning, it should be one even wet coat. So that's why I like working with uh, Lambswell applicator pad. This is just a little disposable pan. So here's some wonderful Home Depot marble. That's actually too much. Limestone. You're, you're being pretty generous. Right? Yes. Sell more sealer. <laughs> OK. Cream of Marfil. I got to tell you guys, it's just that easy. And ladies, excuse me. OK? That's, that's stain proof. So you can imagine if I'm doing a large area, we've had guys, we've done 4,000 square feet and we're using sprayers. Uh, we can seal 4,000 square feet in about um, four hours. Two people, yeah. You don't come back and touch it with anything else? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Just a stone. Now you notice that, can you all see already with the limestone? Yeah. What's going on? It's soaking in, right? Yeah, we didn't put the impregnator in, right? There's, not, there's nothing. What happens is the carrier or the alcohol is drawing in the sealer. The, the, the stone, because it's porous, the bubbles that we first saw, as the sealer goes in, the air pushes out. It's in the stone. That's what causes the bubbles. 
Okay? That's stain proof. Now, I'm not going to do anything. What do other companies say to do within 60 seconds? Remove the access. And what happens if you, what happens if you don't? Money down the drain. Because you're, you're there forever trying to remove it. So that's stain proof. The next thing I want to show you is called Metacreen. So wait a second. Don't wipe it off? Let's see. We will. I'm just showing you, I'm trying to screw up. Now right now with some other sealers, I've already, I'm done. I'm shot. You're going to have a sticky mess. I'm on this marble, wet. In there, it's already soaking in. The coverage rate, 150 square feet per quart, 70 square feet per quart, because the way it soaks it in. You put the coats on a uh, half hour apart. This is Metacream. This is a lotion, see? Now, what's nice about Metacream, there's no smell. This is low VOC. I have fabricators that use Stain Proof and Stain Proof Plus won't use this. I have other people that will not use these. Swear by this. Same amount of active ingredient. The way you apply it is with a high density foam roller, these hot tub rollers. This is the same roller that you would use for stain proof uh, and any of our other sealers. If you use a, seal, uh, a roller that has nap, it causes bubbles. That meta cream is, is that an uh, enhancer? Or? Pardon me? Is there meta cream? Is it an enhancer? Or is it no. A, a, a penetrating? It's a penetrating sealer, but it, it, you use it differently in that we're going to roll it on. The reason we use a foam roller is it leaves the correct amount. So for those of you that are fabricators or are doing some work inside, you see how this is leaving a little bit of a, if, if you guys can't see, by all means, just start wandering around and coming closer. Uh, I also want you to notice that the cream of Marfil is starting to soak in. So it's a little bit more porous than this Home Depot marble. The honed marble, you can see it's wet and dry, starting to soak in. But I'm not going to touch it. Now, what about the uh, oxidized sort of rust on the marble? The rust you would have removed prior to um, sealing. Uh, how do you remove rust from marble? Uh, I've got a gentleman who wants to know how you apply it to grout. How do you apply it to grout? OK, the, what we would do is if we've got, um, let's do the installation, the stone installation first. And then what we're going to do is put on the first coat. 24 hours later, you're going to grout it. That's the first coat serves as a grout release. So for all of the installers, it helps you clean up your grout. I'll get you in a second. It, it gets you able to clean it up. After the grout is cured, which is usually 72 hours, by the manufacturer's spec. Don't mess with the manufacturer's spec. You put on the second coat. The second coat will give you enough sealer to properly seal the grout. Yeah, it, what happens is because when you're installed, you just pay extra attention to the grout to put on one saturating coat. Mm -hmm. Same with your lamb's wool pad. You could use a lamb's wool applicator. If we're doing normal. thousands of square feet, we're using a sprayer. And then when you're using a sprayer, if we're working outside, we do the first coat north-south, the second coat east-west, so we catch all the lippage on the, on the stone. The thing that's really nice about stain proof is it it is an all-in-one product. In other words, you can, cut, you can use it as a grout release, and then it's your final coat. With Metacream, uh, the Metacream, you would go back and just seal the grout. There's no reason to use two coats. Metacream is a one-coat process. Stainproof is a two-coat process. So, sorry, what's the difference between Metacream? Metacream is a water-based lotion, okay. low VOC, low odor. Stain proof is high VOCs. That's why we can only buy it in quartz in California. When you say lotion, what is that? Uh, you, did you see when I, pu I pushed it out? It was like yeah. uh, shampoo. Okay. It was like conditioner. I have a question for the meta cream. Do we have to wipe it or something? Because I still see that. In one hour. In one hour? Oh, okay. Sits for one hour. So what's, what's nice about the meta cream, you apply it and uh, you don't have to touch it for an hour, like on a countertop. So. If you're doing a countertop, installing it in somebody's home, 
and they're there. They don't want the smell of the alcohol. You, you smell the alcohol a little bit. Well, yeah. if we're doing a lot, it gets really, it gets yeah. a little heady. Well, sometimes they have Osmo or things like that. Yes, yeah. and that's where you use Metacream. The only place you don't use Metacream is on uh, these softer limestones because they can darken it. But before we leave tonight, we're going to sample Metacream 2. So I'll show you the difference. So you're getting a sneak peek at what's coming onto the market. It's called Metacream 2. Where Metacream can actually enhance the softer materials, this will not. So we'll be talking about that a little bit later. This is, I'm, boy, am I in trouble. But I'm jumping forward on this. We're, we're, we're sending out some information at coverings in two weeks. And this is going to be a very interesting product. Metacream 2 is not the final name. It's just that we're working on a low VOC water-based material that you can use on floors. So you, ideally, here's how it works. What's the difference? Metacream is a water-based solution that works best on harder countertops, harder limestones, marbles that won't change the color. This new sealer that we're coming up with, our new water-based sealer, will be the complementary product to this. It's going to come in two and a half gallon buckets. Stainproof is our general all-purpose sealer, 50% active ingredient. For doing countertops, we recommend you use Stainproof Plus. The reason a lot of people came to us and said, well, why don't you just have this in a pint? I only need a pint, because this will seal 75 square feet of marble. 75 square feet of marble, that's a lot of, that's a lot of marble. That's a nice big kitchen. They only need the pint. So this is 70% active ingredient. It was specifically designed for, so that's, the engineer said, well, instead of giving you this in a pint, I'm giving you something better. The difference is in the price, this retails for $60, this retails for $86.75. Now remember, I'm just giving you retail prices. Okay, I'm not going into any kind of volume discounts, but obviously, there's, once you get going, and there's no reason for you to just come in and grab sealer whenever you need it. You should be picking up the sealer by the case. A case of stain proof will seal 750 square feet to 800 square feet of limestone. When people say, well, does it come in gallons? And we say, well, yeah, there's three gallons in a case, 12 <laughs> quarts. OK, so that is the Metacream. Now, take a look here. Can you all see this? Can you see those hard spots, how they're a little shiny? But you notice the sealer's soaked in. I haven't touched it. On the cream of Marfil, it is still sitting on the surface, but it's sort of hazy. On this, where I put too much, I'm going to take a little bit of it off. The instructions say, after 10 minutes, wipe off the excess. 10 to 15 minutes, wipe off the excess. I forgot your question. What was it? And we'll talk about this after the break. This is Porcelain Plus. This was developed specifically. But these sealers for ritual grout, right? That's for uh, our seal these sealers are for natural stones. Natural stones, concrete, grout. You wouldn't use this on porcelain. Oh, grout only? Yes. Same price. It's the same price. This this one, this porcelain sealer and the stain proof original, same price. Yes. Both, we, of them? both of them can be used on grout. Okay. And what about a grout release? This can be used as a grout release on porcelain. This can be used as a grout release on the stone. The application will be the same on the porcelain? The same no. On porcelain, the coverage is 400 square feet per quart. Uh, I'm talking, I want to use this. You're recommending to use that one on the grout, on the porcelain grout. Yeah. Just, the application will be the same? Or yeah, you can use a little roller or a brush. You can, you, they make these foam rollers even smaller. On the towel, 24 by 24. I'm using the small roller, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, there will not be any residue on your porcelain. You, you, you put it on, and as you see it soak in, you take a rag and wipe the excess off. It doesn't get sticky. Uh, intensifier. This is our enhancer. And Yes, you have been. Okay, I just brought in some cheap Home Depot pavers. And what the intensifier does 
is it darkens. It's very simple. It's, it's an impregnator. And I'm going to roll it on. You can use a br these cheaper brushes to cut in. So if the woodwork is already in and you're doing a fort, you can cut in. Never take the sealer right up to the wood. Take it about an eighth of an inch away, it creeps over. Don't try to, don't try to cut right up to the wood. Uh, here's the intensifier. Again, very, um, just a high performance silicone. Easy to use. Two coat process. Now this is very absorbent, right? So I'm going to put on one coat and we'll put a second coat on in about a half hour. This is just drinking it up. But this is just cheap, cheap, cheap concrete. So, so what's the difference between the uh, intensifying and the same? Okay, here's the difference. Now I've got to go back to the front there. So we're going to have a camera change. Um, what the intensifier is, it's an enhancer. And we'll pass this around. This, how many of you are trying to deal with these encaustic tiles? You set in a lot of these cement tiles? Nightmare? Stain proof original. No problem. This is the intensifier. If you wanted the burgundy to get darker, if I kept putting burgundy stain in it, all I would end up with is very, very weak concrete. So to take it the next step, you use an enhancer. So what an enhancer does, it darkens. This has stain proof on this side, intensifier on this side. Go ahead and pass that around. Now, pass these around together. This is, this is polished marble, a black marble. Here it is honed. And you, on the side, you can see this is what color, like when you hone marble, it turns gray. Here it is with the intensifier. It's beautiful. So Darkens and seals. It's a sealer and enhancer all in one. It's a beautiful material. Now, on it, on the, on the label, it says a five-year warranty. That's because it will fade, and you have to reapply it. But all you have to do is coat it, uh, clean it, and reseal it. Pass these two around. This is really interesting, because this is, this is the question about the ager. But also, uh, I had a guy do a really interesting restoration where it was um, 70s granite that had all the pinks and greens in it and the uh, huge kitchen so to update the kitchen what the client did is they got all new cabinetry but they kept the stone but the shiny I'm gonna call it cheaper it's just the look that we used to get it, it was uh, kind of funky uh, they honed it they honed the granite and then intensified it to bring the color back out so it made it look more modern so those of you that are fabricators, it's not easy to hone granite, but a really nice solution for a renovation is to hone it. With uh, these, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused. You put the intensifier on there. Yeah, the other one has nothing on it. So, so when you put this on, it takes the shine away? No, the honed versus polished. The, the black marble that's coming around, one piece is naturally polished, the other one has been honed. When you hone something, it turns the color of the side of the marble, it turns gray. For black absolute, black granites, if you really want them to pop, use the intensifier, especially if they've been bush hammered, if they've been raked. Uh, what's happening in the world of, of stone is all these extra techniques that people are doing. And in doing so, it takes away the color from a polished material. But you can bring it back and make it really rich by using an enhancer. How long ago did I put that on? Half hour ago? 40, 45 minutes ago? Like 35 minutes. Right? What do you notice? Anything? Sticky? It's like, do I have a problem here? Or is everything going to be OK? What do you think? Well, this one still is dark. So. That's because it's drying. It's dark with that. So lime, remember, the porosity here was higher. Yeah. The reason you see a shiny spot there it's, that's a hard spot. So the first step to remove our sealer is to clean it with a terry cloth towel and then buff it with a microfiber towel. These are the two 
Okay, so we've gone through some basics. Remember, everything I'm talking to you about now is very important for any other sealer. The only difference is you can't leave the other brands of sealer on as long as I just did. That's called dwell time, D-W-E-L-L, -L, dwell time. Other sealers, a lot of them you'll say, put it on, get it off within 60 seconds or it's going to start get sticky. The whole idea with our sealers is the dwell time. You put the sealer on, the liquid is not the sealer. The sealer is 50% active ingredient. It's inside it. It's dropping out and depositing on the stone. It's a chemical reaction. The sealer is being attracted to the stone. That's the big difference between dry treat and other sealers. It's a chemical reaction. The sealer molecule is attracted to the stone. The liquid is just the carrier. It's a way to deliver. The whole idea of water base versus solvent base. A water molecule is about this big. A solvent is about this big. It's a smaller molecule. The reason you've seen more water-based materials in the market, it was the rush to lower the VOC. Water-based sealers are not any better or any worse than a solvent. The thing with a solvent, it's easier to reapply if it was every year to put solvent on top of solvent. It's very hard to reapply a water-based sealer unless it's a lotion year after year because if there's any sealer that's left, it's a water repellent. It repels the other sealers. So don't get too lost in this water versus solvent. We use alcohol because when we get the chemical bond, it actually creates alcohol. Alcohol keeps everything in suspension. Now, for cleaning up, let's start with, uh, here, here's a nice thing too. See, cream of marfil, beautiful. There's a drop of water and it left a, a stain. Very simple, terry cloth towel. Our instructions say, buff off the excess. Polish it with a microfiber. This has a bad scratch on it. But you all came by, remember? Now this can be done if you're doing a floor. The sealer is on the side that has the scratch, not where the void is. Again, marble. And this has been sitting out. Other sealers, you'd have a difficult time doing this. Wipe off the excess with a terry cloth. Buff. With a microfiber. And I'm, I'm not really looking at this carefully. So the sealer is on this side. You can actually see, see how the stone is slightly darker? Can you see it's a little yellow? The Metacream, remember I said, stays on for an hour. That's not ready to come off. This is ready for its second coat. I'm listening. For the floor, are okay, it's gonna stay the, the, the sealer. So I want to apply that the wall is gonna slip down. I have to do many coats. Oh, don't worry about that. Uh, the, the question is, uh, if you're doing a shower, do you have to do multiple coats? It might be easier to do three light coats instead of two heavier coats. Also, when you're doing a shower, we were talking about this on the break, it's best if you protect the floor, seal the walls first, and then do the floor second. It's also uh, last. It's also better when you're doing a um, vertical to work from the bottom up. You know why? So that when it drips, it's dripping into wet rather than dripping down on dry. Okay, um, I put the second coat on here. It's already soaking in, but you'll notice it's staying wetter longer. The first, the first coat, what we do is, when we say to work with our sealer, the surface should look mirror wet for three to five seconds. That's one, two, three, four, five. After 10 minutes, that's enough sealer. After 10 minutes, you wipe off the excess. 
You don't do what I just did. I tried to make a mistake to show you that if you make the mistake, it just cleans off. Just make sure you have the right tools. OK? So if we're spraying, we're using pump sprayers, not trigger sprayers. If we're rolling, we're using foam rollers. Here's a question that came up during the break. Well, you know, I just did the patio and the client decided that they want to use dry treat, but they just had me do the entire patio with 511. What should I do? You can go right over the Miracle or Aquamix or Fila or Lithofin the next day. What you'll find is it will sit wetter longer. Because the other sealer is there. Our sealer, remember all of these sealers, whether it's Miracle, DuPont, Aquamix, wonderful inventions, all microscopic. When the sealer, wear, like when we were talking about, well, you have to reapply it every year. Well, it's not like the sealer wears off and you have a pile of sealer dust in the corner. It's still on the microscopic level. The other sealers, I remember I said they're a mechanical bond where they link together. They break down from friction, from walking on it. They break down from UV. And they break down from cleaners. Remember in our industry, we say you must use pH neutral cleaners. That's to protect the other type of sealers. Our sealers are alkaline resistant. They're resistant to salts. So you can use bleach, and you're not going to hurt our sealers. You can use strong industrial cleaners, strong alkaline. It's not going to hurt our sealers. It will remove the other types of sealers. With our sealers, you can use, you can pressure wash. You can use steam cleaning, because they hold up to 350 degrees. You can use alkalines, and you can use solvents will not hurt the sealer. It's a permanent chemical bond. That's what dry treat's about. That's the thing to remember. We are chemically bonding. That's why it lasts 15 years. We've got the chemical bond, and we've got the true impregnation. Now you can see, here's what we did with the paver. And a lot of people will use the intensifier as a restoration material. In other words, they have an installation. It's older, and it started to fade. Well, they can bring it back to life by enhancing it. This will get a little bit lighter because it, you know, it was just sucking in. But you saw the enhancer as we passed it around, how rich and dark it will uh, make the marble or the cement tile. Uh, so that covered one thing. Another question that came up is how much do I charge? I'm not really in that part of the business, but I can give you some ideas. If the sealer costs a dollar a square foot, Remember, you've, you've got to get your, uh, uh, pay for your time to not only clean, but um, seal. So it's not uh, uncommon, to, depending on the size of the job, to charge anywhere from $1.50 to $2.50 a square foot labor for sealing for larger outdoor patios. Don't charge by the square foot for a kitchen or a bathroom. There's not enough square footage there. So a, a lot of people will charge between 350 and 550 to seal a kitchen. And that's a small island and countertops. Bathroom, the same thing. Bathrooms actually take longer to seal because they're so complex. With showers, you've got all these angles and stuff. So make sure that you cover yourself. So you learn how to find a good flat rate for sealing um, uh, let me just put it on top of that. Uh, you want to find a good flat rate for doing these tighter spaces like um, uh, bathrooms and kitchens. When you get into over, you know, square footage, I've got people that are spraying, you know, nine, ten thousand 10,000 square feet. Their price is usually sometimes less than a dollar a square foot for their labor. Because all they're doing is going out with sprayers if there's no cleaning. But if there's cleaning involved, pay yourself for the cleaning and then seal. You do have to remember with our sealers that the surface must be dry. OK? So the, there should be no picture framing. The grout needs to be dry. And there should be no watermarks. Our sealer is reactive. It reacts with oxygen and hydrogen. 
So it will react with water and it literally dies. On the bottom of the bottle of sealer, this came up during the break, how long does the sealer last? Uh, it has a date of manufacture on the bottom and the sealer is good for uh, three to four years from the date of manufacture. What about when I open the bottle? Well, we put on here, you have to use it within three or seven days because we have to put something there. I have bottles that have been open for a year, but you didn't hear that from me. But don't leave it on your truck. Take it out of your, if you've got four bottles with a little bit in each one, just go ahead and consolidate them. This sealer, you notice when I poured it out, is clear, right? Uh, you can tell it's going bad if it turns a darker yellow or light brown. The Metacream was a uh, light, a light yellow. It's manufactured anywhere from yellow to white. Okay? So uh, if you open one up and it's turned brown or tan, it's gone bad. And what happens, you bring it back and then the, uh, the vendor will also send it back to us and we credit everybody back. Um, you do want to you do want to check that occasionally. So real quick review: intensifier, enhancing, stainproof original, everything. This uh, this accounts for about seventy five to eighty percent of our sales. This is our go to sealer, and a lot of people say, well, what was it sealed with? They say the dry treat. Um, the company, it's a play on words. Uh, we treat things so they remain dry. Okay? So any material, it won't change the color. The enhancer will. Countertops. Because 70% active ingredient, it will not prevent etching on marbles. Everybody wants to know, do the sealers stop etching? Your clients are going to ask you, well, I've got this marble floor, is it going to stop etching? The answer is no. No penetrating or impregnating sealer will stop etching. That has to be a, a barrier, some sort of film. So a topical sealer, but you don't want to be putting cheap topical sealers on $10,000 marble slabs. The deal with living with marble and sealing marble, for those of you that are fabricators, what we can guarantee that we're going to stop is the staining from both oil and water. That's the most important thing. The etch marks can always be polished out. Now, other people have said, OK, Ed, this is a great deal. You're selling me a sealer, and I make a really good living resealing. And eh, let's hold on there. How many people really get called back to reseal every two years? Not a lot, OK? The, the, your clients, in general, won't reseal. That's where all the restoration companies come in to take care of the damage. What's nice about our, our sealer, and when you start working with your clients, is to get a, a long-term relationship with them. They've turned to you as a professional to do the correct job sealing. It still needs to maintain, be maintained. Showers still need to be checked. Caulking needs to be checked. Sinks need to be You don't caulk it once and expect it to last forever. So you also know the tricks of cleaning, of how to correctly clean stone. No different than somebody with hardwood floors. When people put in hardwood floors, they don't expect them to miraculously be beautiful all the time. They'll usually have somebody come in every couple years and take care of their hardwood floors. This is still a big component of what you do. So you don't have to stay away from the clients. You can be a, become a part of their home moving forward and go back. And, and you can always remind them just about professional maintenance. You've got a swimming pool coming up. So if they're doing, you know, you know that the, the area is going to get trashed, there's a problem. The sealer is called stain proof. I didn't name it stain proof. Stupid name. Um, what DuPont didn't learn from us by calling theirs bulletproof, I don't know. Um, when it stains, we guarantee the stain will come out. Because remember, the impregnation block is where? Right here. If you have a party, if this was a marble counter and we had dinner here tonight and we got uh, oils from the pizza, a little salad dressing from the subs, spilled Coke, and you go on vacation for two, two weeks, you're going to come back 
and you're going to have stains from the oil, stains from the cola, stains from the salad dressing, but they're going to be sitting on top. They're going to be repelled. The stain cannot get down into the sealer. This is the difference between an impregnating sealer and a penetrating sealer. On some penetrating sealers, you will still get a stain because there's barely any impregnation. Because of the depth of impregnation, the stains just sit on top. In general, it just comes off with soap and water. We have plenty of really cool cleaning materials here. We make a couple that I'll go over, but in general, the reason you're sealing is so that your client can maintain their property, their bathroom, their kitchen, their outdoor barbecue, whatever. Uh, speaking of outdoor barbecues, this is the only sealer that will work outdoors on an outdoor granite installation because it won't break down in the sunshine. Our sealers are UV stable. Yeah. Safe for prep areas? yeah. Pardon me? Are they safe for prep areas? Yes. Once, once the uh, sealer has cured, there's no outgassing. The alcohol that we use in here is um, ethanol, which is wood alcohol. Uh, the other one is called methanol, which is in gasoline. That's a, a petroleum byproduct. There's no petroleum byproducts in our sealers. Once it's dry, that's it. Good to go. If you have a client that wants to reapply it every five years, they don't trust the warranty, fine. Go reapply it. Go make some more money. Yeah. All you have to do is clean it and reapply it. Like I said, if if they've sealed it with one other sealer and you want to cut, they want to change, fine. Go in and seal it. Clean it and seal it. Uh, the only sealers that it won't work on are the topical coatings, like the glaze and seals, which people love the wet look. Yeah. Remember, this is our wet look. It's dry, but it still looks like it's wet. So it brings out the richness. It is a sealer. It doesn't change the coefficient of friction. Our sealers don't. You've noticed as you're touching them, even the marble that I pet, you don't feel the sealer. You won't feel the sealer even though this is still wet. This is just drying. I just put on the second coat, but you can see around the edge where it's starting to dry. It, it's going to go back. You won't see this line tomorrow. In general, it can take up to two to three days for a limestone to dry back. The Metacream can take uh, five days. Um, just depends on the stone. Others, same day, it's back to the original color. The only time that people have issues with my, it's not drying correctly is misapplication. Make sure that you put on the sealer if you're spraying in long straight strokes. If you're using a roller, you, you know, they make rollers that are this big. We don't have them here, but they do make rollers that are gigantic. You have them? You got the big ones, the 24s? They're beautiful. It, this is where you got to get away from sponges and rags. No short strokes. Long, even strokes uh, with the sealer. Long, even strokes. Put it on evenly. Let it sit. After 15 minutes, wipe off the excess. Just wipe it off. Put the second coat on a half hour later. If you're doing a job that's already grouted, wipe off the excess again with a cherry cloth, then your final wipe off. You don't have to use this at each stage, at each stage. This takes off that last little bit. If you're doing a large floor, if we're doing like this entire floor, well then you're gonna put um, you can get a carpet pad, cotton carpet pad, which is like this, for removing excess and a final buffing with a white pad. Just go over the whole thing with a white pad. Just make sure that you don't overdo it on a limestone, because some of these limestones, you can actually polish. You can, if you, as funky as some of the travertines are, unfilled travertines, you actually polish them. I had a contractor say, well, look, I can't get the excess off. It's, it wasn't the problem. He was polishing the stone. Well, what happens if you don't take the excess off? Because it, seems to it will attract dirt. It, you, that's why I had you all touch it when you came back. There's still something there. With the alcohol one, it's not pure alcohol. We put a material in there that stops the alcohol from flashing off immediately. If, this was, if we had just had pure alcohol, um, uh, it would evaporate really quickly. Now, if you make a mistake and it's three months later, which just happened, um, and there's an issue where there's excess sealer, if it's a, 
like a texture and you've left too much excess in, you can re-emulsify with the sealer itself. Just put the sealer on, it makes it wet again, you can wipe off the excess. If it's uh, months later, you use acetone, which you're using in general, you're using acetone. Are there any questions for anything up to this point? Uh, is this the only size bottle that you're, that it's for only for this product? The intensifier comes in quarts and gallons. The stain proof comes in quarts only. The Metacream only comes in, uh, wherever the hell I put it, this one liter bag, which is kind of cool packaging. Let's, uh, let's take a look at something real quick. The new sealer. Now, now here, Metacream, it's still wet. It's just sitting there. This one's a little different. But this is a lotion. This is our new water-based sealer. My own curiosity, um, but just to show you. Dry, Dry Treat is a scientific company. Um, uh, we're, the, the founder is an engineer. And we are always trying to bring new products to market. That's the idea of bringing this out. I've got a captive audience. I'm curious as hell. Um, it's a little different than the regular Metacream. It won't have the same dwell time. Same application, one heavy coat. Now this one smells like cloves. It has, it has oil of clove in it. Uh, this is a, a little bit different kind of lotion. It's, it's much thinner than the Metacream. This, this could actually be sprayed in a sprayer. I'm just, we'll just see. Yes, it's the next generation. Everything we bring out is usually going to be the next generation. Stainproof Plus is the next generation of Stainproof. So it's, an, it's always going to be an improvement. No, it doesn't have to do with the warranty. It has to do with the dwell time. Because with this new sealer, you put it on, but you take it off in 10 minutes. This one, I'm still having to wait an hour before I take off the excess. So it's, it has to do with the, the dwell time. Um, You can pass that around if you want, just to see that the odor is very low, and it's actually pretty pleasing. Well, well, I'm just watching it to see what the dwell time is. It's still, it's still wet. Uh, so different stones obviously there's different dwell times. Yes. But how long is the minimum on the intensifier? There is no minimum or maximum, as long as it'll stay wet. You want the uh, you want the surface to look wet for three to five seconds. But you also remember, when I put the stain proof on this stone, it's soaked in immediately. You notice how this new sealer is sort of sitting there? So I've got, I've got a longer dwell time with it. So I'm going to leave this over here. I'm going to move back over to the front. Now, let's have some questions. I've been talking too much. What, what have you had problems of what? I don't have the price on the, it's, uh, I think it's three something a gallon, retail. That's the one time it's good for me to not have a good memory because I will mess up on prices when I try to remember what the prices are. Uh, price, retail price on a gallon, retail price on a, cal, a gallon of intensifier. I think, it's three, I, I think it's 303. Porcelain Plus, the latest and greatest invention from Dry Treat. Not all porcelains need to be sealed. Some of them do. The grout definitely needs to be sealed. Dry Treat is known for its chemical bond and its impregnation. I can't impregnate quartz.
uh, porcelain. But I can chemically bond. The difficult porcelains are the polished porcelains. They get dirty very easy. When they polish it, it opens up little air pockets. So polished is difficult. Through body. Through body is solid clay. The classic is the dowel two by two mesh mounted white tile with no glaze. Nightmare to keep clean. So the coverage on this is 400 square feet per quart. Because we're not impregnating, but we are chemically bonding to the surface and making the surface easier to keep clean. Today's porcelains are not the porcelains of 25 years ago. Whole new technologies. These matte glazes are difficult to take care of. The wood grain is difficult to take care of. So what people are doing is they're installing the porcelain. Most manufacturers, some of them are re recommending a sealer. Cross fill to a point that they will seal it for you at their factory with cross, uh, it's called cross tech. Um, cheap insurance. At retail, it's less than ten dollars a square foot, uh, ten cents a square foot, and you will be able to seal the the grout at the same time. So what people are doing, they're installing, pre-sealing, grouting 24 hours later, and when the grout is cured, they'll go back and um, seal the grout. This is for cementaceous grouts. If you're using a urethane or epoxy, you don't necessarily need to. Also, check your grouts. Some grouts, they say it, it's already sealed after you install it. They only repel water. They don't repel oil. Is that uh, if you're using a, like, a, a epoxy grout, one coat, two coats on your tile? Just one. Uh, epoxy sticks to anything. One coat is all you, there's no reason to put more on. It will help with epoxy. But if you're using an epoxy grout, it goes to the seal. No, no. No, it's for a grout release, for epoxy. It helps. So one coat either way? Well, one coat and then grout and then seal. Yeah, but you still have to be neat with your epoxy. A lot of contractors don't want to do epoxy on thousands of square feet. They want to use a regular cementaceous grout, but then it does need to be sealed. Okay, so that's the whole world of Porcelain Plus. As, as far as quartz, it also seals quartz countertops. How many of you have fabricated the new quartz that are on the markets? And that some of them are difficult. Remember with Caesar stone, if it was honed, everybody had to sign a release. This will seal honed Caesar stone. Do all of you understand what quartz is, the man-made materials, the man-made quartz? They take ground up natural stone, quartzite, press it, but first, before they press it, they, it has a binder. So it gets tumbled. Each, let's say this is the molecule. The molecules are tiny, but let's say this is it. It's completely tumbled in the binder. It goes into a machine where the big slabs are pressed under vacuum pressure. It comes out, and it comes out shiny. The shine is the binder or the resin. The minute you hone it, you're taking off that protective coating. And it does need to be sealed. Now, we can't impregnate because it's still surrounded on the other sides by the binder. We can't impregnate the binder. But we can give your, you can give your clients protection for honed. What's happening now in uh, a lot of these quartz materials is people want to uh, hone them. They want them leathered. They really want stone. And the reason they don't have stone is they don't know about dry treat sealers. If they knew about dry treat sealers, they would have stayed with stone. If they knew about dry treat sealers, they wouldn't be worrying about epoxy grouts, which were supposed to be the end all be all so that you don't have to worry about it staining. OK? So that's, that's the world of quartz. So we can, see, we can seal uh, quartz slabs. Again, we're not, we're, it's, it's going to be a long battle. Um, our competitors, uh, it's been monkey see, monkey do. They've all come out with quartz sealers too, quartz and porcelain sealers. So get used to it. You'll see it. Just understand, when dry treat comes into play, it chemically bonds. The other, I've looked at all the formulations for the others. From what I can tell, because we usually all reveal what our content is, um, their active content, it's impossible for it to chemically bond. So it'll wear off, in other words. 
The last sealer is called 40SK. 40SK is a, this is what we use when we're sealing a bridge. Um, this is a consolidator and a salt repellent. So uh, for those of you that worked on pools before, where they say you can't use limestone coping on a saltwater pool because the limestone will deteriorate, this will protect the li limestone from the deterioration. When we're doing the exterior of a house, the, remember stain proof, let me go get my stain proof, I'll be right back. Uh, stain proof repels both oil and water. 40SK only repels water. So when we're doing a deck, stain proof. If we're doing uh, verticals, we don't need oil repellency, but we need water repellency. That's where we use 40SK. This comes in gallons, five gallon containers. This is less expensive than stain proof. I just don't want you to make a mistake. Just because it says dry treat. Remember, this does not repel oil. This is for salt water environment. So when I do uh, the houses along the coast, we are sealing the stucco, we're sealing the architectural trim, we're sealing some of them are completely clad in stone, or we're sealing the cement. Um, because you all know, you've been to the coast, salt, sodium chloride is extremely corrosive especially to high calcium materials, that's the world we live in. Cement, stone, grout, you name it. It deteriorates in a salt water environment. So we have sealer, a sealer for salt water environment. If somebody asks you to seal their pool and pool deck, ask them if it's a salt water pool. What will happen if it's a bleach pool? Uh, you, you just use stain proof. Or you could just use this. Um, you still, you still want to put, yeah. Uh, does it help prevent spalding for like flagstone, brick? Yes, it's a consolidator, but once something has started to deteriorate, we don't put a consolidator on it because it makes it, it could potentially could break in bigger pieces. So then in that case, we just seal it. Got that? So this is a consolidator and your clients are going to read, well, it says it's a consolidator and it helps hold things together. Yes on new installations, no on restorations. That's the best way to look at it. But again, 1-800-CALL-ED. You always should be calling me with stuff like that. If I don't train on this during this session, um, we train on this. If you get a job, I help you with it, and I go out to the job site with you and train you on the job site on how to use 40SK. This is an additional level license. Those of you that are fabricators um, uh, have a level 1 to level, level 1.5 uh, license. Uh, those of you that are installers have a level 2. Here's the difference. If you're a fabricator and if you get a call to go out and seal somebody's pool, are you going to do it? No. No. You going to do it? Probably not. So lots of times we don't list you on the website because that's not the scope of what you do. You're, you're a countertop guy. But we will still get you the work. Those of you that are listed on the website, you have to go do the work if you get the call to come out and please seal it, even if you didn't install it. If you do not want to go out, get a phone call from, from homeowner Jones, says, I need something sealed, will you come out? If you're not willing to do that, you can still be an accredited applicator. We just don't list you on the website. So you can still offer your clients the warranty. This, what I would say is give it a year and then decide. But if you ever find that you're getting calls to go out and seal a countertop and you're a pool guy, you don't want to go seal somebody's countertop, let us know. And so we'll, we'll try to figure out how we can get this dialed in a little bit better. You get listed on our website under one city. Um, I have guys that trained in Anaheim, but they want to be listed in Laguna Beach because they uh, do all their work in Laguna Beach. So if some of you are more specialized in Beverly Hills, then we list you if you want in Beverly Hills. Otherwise, you'll all be listed under North Hollywood. Um, and then people just go to the website and we'll, we'll find you. There's more to this. Uh, besides what we're trying to get done tonight. 
the major thing is to familiarize yourself with the sealer, basics of how to put them on, let you see and touch. You can't screw up. Well, you can't. But in general, I tried to screw up. It didn't screw up, right? I just left the sealer on there. That is the, the one number one sin of all other sealers on the market. If you leave it on there and don't pay attention to it, you're going to spend hours trying to remove it. You are not required to always file the warranty. If somebody calls you because they want an accredited applicator, you are required. The warranty is filed online. The reason it's important that I, we have your email addresses is I have to register you in our system. You're going to get a letter, welcome to Dry Treat, and that gives you the password to get into our system. I'll help you with your first warranty on how to, how to fill it out. Very easy. Once you fill out your first one, the next one you do, everything auto loads um, like all your information. You don't keep putting it in your information. Make sure that you're paid first. Never let your client say, I'll pay you once I get my warranty. That's not how it works. Once you're done with the job, you then file the warranty. You don't hand it to them before you're paid. The warranty, when it comes up online, is just a form. And it'll have a uh, client's address, uh, client's name, client's address, client's email, and then uh, area sealed, type of stone, amount of sealer used. And that's where this whole world, I'll, I'll be sending every one of you a uh, uh, application guide of how much to use. That's the warranty, how the warranty works. Put on the correct amount, we get the impregnation, and that's what we're warranting. So we've already done, we've got 20 years of figuring out approximately how much sealer it takes for all these different stones. This is not a punched up number to, to sell sealer. This is an accurate number. Use the correct amount. We know you're going to get impregnation. If there's ever questions, you first thing you do is call me. Yeah, you got a question? yeah I know. Yeah. So, okay, let's say in five years' time, I get a client calling me saying it's not worked properly. So I'll call you, but obviously it'll be down to me because I may not have applied it you, because your product, you say, does 15 years, right? If, if you filed the warranty and the warranty was passed, you filed it, you did it correctly, unless you, it's a false claim. In other words, if you use the correct amount of sealer, it will be right. So here's the steps that happen. Well, let me finish the form. So after you fill out the form, it then gets emailed to Dry Treat. Um, it gets approved or rejected. If it ever gets rejected, just call me. Sometimes it happens when you're doing it. Uh, it's a computer that's looking at those numbers. A copy then gets emailed from Dry Treat to your client. That's how the transition is. That's how the whole system works. If you ever have a problem with a warranty. Nine times out of 10, it's people with marble saying, what's the stain? It won't come out. And I have a warranty. And we first thing you ask them, well, what is the stain? Well, it's hard to see. You can only see it on an angle. Is this a polished countertop? Well, yeah. If you rub your fingernail across it, is it slightly rough? It's an acid edge. Uh, usually what happens if you get a complaint, the first thing you do is contact me. Then you ask the, if they'll usually contact us instead of you, but if they contact you and there's an issue, uh, you're going to get this from your client. You're going to get five <laughs> pictures of their problem. They already told you they have a problem. What you need is the picture of the problem. Then you need the picture, the master, because you're going to find out that their problem, this gray mark on their light, white limestone, is sitting next to a wolf range. And it's, it's an oil spot. So because of the impression, all these, all these stains are easy to remove. Your client has to pay for you to remove it. This is not a lifetime service. Again, we're, 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 we know that it can stain. In general, though, the stains just come out with soap and water because they're just sitting on top. If, by chance, you can't get the stain out, that's when Dry Treat will step in and we will send in a restoration company to remove the stain. We never replace stone, ever. We take the stains out. 
We've never had a complaint where we've had in 20 some odd years where we, anything has had to be uh, removed. Like seven years and there's not been a callback on an exterior in La Cañada, which is hard to take care of because of all the trees, all the sap and stuff. So it's always hard, you know, when somebody says, trust me. Um, you just get, what you do is start working with it, do your own tests. I mean, the thing you all should be doing is buying a court and giving it a try. Test it, see what you think about it. You know, I'm just sitting here splashing it around. No, ooh, I forgot to take off that ceiling. <laughs> but let's see. The, the Medicream? Yeah, the new, oh, it's still slightly wet. What about the Medicream? Did you take that off? I was nope. I can do that now, though. Oh, this is good. I like it. That passes. Is, is, uh, is, is, this side is, is, is not sealed or sealed? It is sealed. This is that is sealed, sealed with stain proof. And then this one? That's the sealed. new water-based sealer. Oh, so why does it look so different? Uh, the alcohol soaks in really far. This was a lotion, and it was sitting more on top. And but it will get the same impregnation. Did the, the color change, though? Yeah, but that'll change back by tomorrow. It'll be, okay. Okay, Metacream. Metacream, sitting here, it's still wet. I'm wipe off the excess. If it's a large area, you use a squeegee. Now, this one I want to pass around. Pass this around and just rub your finger. I did what the instructions say, wipe off the excess. And just rub your finger through it. You'll see there's still excess there. Now, I'm going to give this to you, back row. Once you get that tile, I want you to wipe off all the excess using that and then send it back around. <laughs> just to show everybody, show everybody the importance, show everybody the importance of the terry cloth towel, of the uh, microfiber towel. So you see it's got a residue on it. I did what the instructions said. Get a clean towel and wipe off the excess. The microfiber is an inside tip from us. Now, with these microfiber towels, you can buy them at um, Costco. But be careful. The yellow ones and the green ones, you have to wash them once. Otherwise, they bleed. OK? Blue ones, you don't have to. And the light orange ones at Home Depot. OK. Now, questions. I'm not going to real. I don't think I'm going to go into cleaners. It's too, too much. Let's. There's got to be. You had the. Did, did I get all your questions on the miracle, the pool? How much to charge? I got one for you. So um, you said that stain proof can be used over existing sealers. Yes. You can go right over top of it. Does it matter though? Does it have to be solvent based, or will it go over a water based? Pool? Doesn't matter. Okay. So if it seals it. You can stain proof it? You can stain proof it. All right, so I didn't get that about the... the 40 SK? Yeah. This is for salt water environment. So if you're doing a beach house... Okay, so... Okay, pass it around. Show everybody. This is the difference when you use a microfiber towel. Now, when you did it, did you notice that you could feel it? You could feel it grab? Yeah. That's the importance of a microfiber towel. It takes that little extra off. Microfiber is a little bit, you know, like when you wax your car and you use cheesecloth? Mm -hmm. That's what microfiber is. If you go to pick up water with microfiber, it doesn't do anything. It, but it's like a woven cheesecloth. So it takes off that, just that little bit of extra that if you don't get it off, that will trap dirt on your client's installation. In general, with grout, all of the sealer just soaks in. Okay, you don't have to worry so much with grout. Okay, they're coming back with the uh, monster tile. Maybe. Uh, any other questions? Okay, now t tell me a little bit about this job before we go, go any further. How many square feet? 5,000 square feet. Interior, exterior? Uh, set on uh, uh, pedestals or mortar set? Uh, it's, it all, it's, it's crack suppression and moisture barrier at the same time. Uh, grouted? Uh, yes. But it's gonna, you're going to grout it. Yes. That's so, the question I was going to 
it's poor or after it's dry? No, it's especially with that, seeing how porous it is, it's going to be much easier to seal it first. Once you seal, you have to use a modified grout. Most grouts nowadays are modified. Prism is modified. The Latacrete grouts are modified. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what is it from uh, Custom Polyblend? Polymer mo modified. You, because you, you've taken away the absorption, the shrinkage is going to be different. If you use the straight mortar, it'll crack. So you need to, when you're pre-sealing, if this is installed, when they go to spray it, they're going to actually be sealing five sides because the sealing is going to go down the sides. The ultimate in protection. So this, you would actually spray this big. So we can spray it if you want. We can take it outside and spray it. Okay. okay. Can I, I'm going to be buying one of your uh, sprayers here. Everybody want to see spraying? You're all installers. But again, I don't want the, I don't want the momentum to stop because we're doing this too. What about uh, any other questions? You're all comfortable giving me a call when you have the questions? Are we friends? Are we friends? Are we partners for life? Yeah. <laughs> no, really. I, I need you. I need you. I need you to. I need you to get involved with our company. And I need you involved with this company. Uh, there's a lot of answers here behind the desks, behind the counters. I've got a ton of answers for you. Sometimes I won't have it, but I'm here to help you out. I'm here to help you with your businesses. I want to make sure that you understand these things. And hopefully tonight we showed you, yeah, this is a different tool. This is a different sealer. I think I can get behind using it. That's the whole idea of what we're doing right now. So if you want to take this outside, I'm going to load up this little sprayer. Where did I put it? Um, and we're going to spray stain proof. This would be the same way you would spray any sealer, but it'll be good for you to see. I could do it with a, my, with a pad, but you won't be doing that with this job. You're going to be spraying. And, and a pump spray is the best on no other type? No, you can't use a trigger spray, like one that goes that shoots out a donut. Yeah. If you ever look on the wall, like if you if I was to shoot it here, like it makes a circle with nothing in the center. So it's arc, 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 arc. So, and th this, this is a great detail sprayer. It's hard to do big jobs. But for if we're doing a big patio, you can cut in with this. Um, if you're doing around windows, you use these. Otherwise, you use a Hudson sprayer with a regular fan tip. So let's take this outside. I, we could probably just do it on the dry. It's going to leave a sealer spot when it rains. Do you have cardboard or? Uh, we don't have cardboard that I know of. I can get a cardboard. I can get a cardboard. OK, when he comes back, <laughs> when he comes back with a cardboard, we'll go outside and do this. But out front? Yeah. OK. Uh, no, I don't want to, you know, here's the thing. We ha when you spray, you've got overspray. Um, I don't want to get it on, um, this is called, what? what's this called? What's the process Sparta called, Daniel? Sparta coat from Laticrete. Um, this, is an this is alcohol. This is a solvent. So I don't want to get solvent on here. Um, but it, this is a nice, I, I appreciate you bringing it. Because it's a good chance for you all to see what spraying's all about. Because you saw how I was putting on the seal. I don't put on a lot of sealer. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Because they blow with the sun in and wash it with stones. And I'm sorry. Nice. The stone has to be clean and very nice. The stone has to be clean and dry. Clean and dry. So if you, if brushing is fine. Um, vacuuming. I, I had a, a client that had um, Texas limestone, which is dusty like this stuff. And uh, inside, OK. We could go outside. And what he did was he had a vacuum cleaner. And he vacuumed the whole thing. It was beautiful. So let's go outside, and we'll spray this bad boy. A couple things to remember when you're working outside, and you're working outside, and you're spraying. Always have an area to walk off. Always have an area to walk off and load your sprayer. Um, let's say this is a pool coping. 
we had a client that um, they all they wanted there was the coping spray. So the guys went out and they sealed the coping, right? And it was during the summertime. And when they were done, they just walked away from the job site like this. Well, it rained. There were footprints of sealer. When we just had our rain, you've got footprints coming off of that. Footprints out there. Yeah. You got footprints coming off of there onto the concrete. Uh -huh. It's a common mistake. Always have a piece of cardboard where you're filling your sprayer, but also, most importantly, where you test your sprayer before you actually spray. That's not bad. Now again, you would be using a much bigger sprayer to do this. Now you feel the wind coming at us. I would also have somebody here with a cardboard flag. So spraying is usually a two-person operation. One person is spraying, the other person is there with a piece of cardboard. When you get over to this wall, they'll have a piece of cardboard that they put down so you can spray right up to the wall. Just like painting a car, it's all, this whole thing about sealing is no different than being a painter. Prep, prep, prep. And the sealing is done in a second. Sealing takes no time. It's all about the prep. It's all about you cleaning, identifying what you're sealing, getting it clean, and then correctly sealing it. So let's see how we do. I wish it was harder than this, but it's not. Now with a big Hudson sprayer, this would have been two passes. But you also notice that was what, six passes? Do you see any lines? First coat, north-south. Second coat, east-west. Uh, I would wait a little bit longer, but if you find that the spray is not as wide, repressurize. These are real easy to use. When you're done with this, clean it with alcohol, denatured alcohol. Now you'll see the second coat will stay wetter longer. That's it. Like I said, I wish it was harder. Then you let it uh, sit for how long? Uh, something like this you wouldn't touch. There's no excess to reap because it's so dry and porous. Uh -huh. Everything soaks in. So there's so, no wiping off with anything? Uh -huh. No microfiber? Not on a limestone like this. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. Easy, easy peasy. Does that help? OK, easy. Bigger sprayer, you're going to be putting on a lot more with a bigger sprayer, so it will sit wetter. The first coat, you won't be able to tell. The second, so you're going to put on the first coat, 24 hours later, grout the job. So this, the first coat's going to help as a grout release. The second coat, when you come back three days later, will be much easier, You'll easier to read. So. When it's this porous, it's hard to get it to be wet for three to five seconds. If I had waited a half hour to put on that second coat, it would sit wet for three seconds. So the reason it the reason it didn't get wet is it just soaked in together. I'm just doing it so that you could see there's no marks, there's no overlaps. Time of the day, let's say there's sun penetrating, hitting this. The the stone needs to be between 45 and 95 degrees and you don't work in the direct sun. So this time of, day, this time of year, you're spraying at six o'clock in the morning. If you're out on the coast, you have to wait for the dew to burn off. You don't spray at the end of the day. The air is cooler, but the stone's its hottest. Right, so 95 is maximum, right? Yes, the temperature of the stone. Because the air still may be 95, but if it's overcast, you're okay. So the way you would seal this building is it's going to be cool in the morning here. It's going to be very hot on this side at noon and the back side at the end of the day. So first thing in the morning, you start on this side, mm -hmm. on the south side. Mm -hmm. Move to the west side. Come back 
do the north side and you do the east side last. It's had the whole day to cool off. So you have to chase the sun. The other thing that's really important for your apps is put in the weather channel. Because people are they're always saying, Ed, how can I seal? Can I if you seal and it rain the 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 insula, the sealer needs to stay dry for 24 hours. That's what we say. Bottom line is when you're doing a job, you can walk on it, you, not your homeowners. You can walk on it in four hours. It can get wet in 12. You can walk on it while you're doing the work if you wear spikes or booties. Just make sure you have some place to walk off so you don't leave footprints. When your client says, when can I use my shower? Three days, because you know they're going to use it in one or two. When can I set my countertop back up? 24 hours, because you actually don't want the little rubber feet coming in contact with the alcohol, because you notice on that limestone, it's taking a while for it to dry out. That's the alcohol that's soaked in, still coming back out. In general, 24 hours, 24 hours. When can I go on my driveway? 24 hours. And we do driveways. I mean, we do, like you've got, this is a 5,000 square footer. We've done 22,000 square foot driveways. We seal everything from uh, a kitchen vanity to the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. So these sealers are used uh, high volume, high traffic commercial areas to your own, your, your own home and your client's own home. So again, what everybody's looking for with our products and the use of our products, they're looking for a quality product. Uh, again, it's only going to make you as a craftsperson a better craftsperson, a better business person, and it will definitely help your business. So then first, do the first coat, grout it 24 hours later, then do the second coat. After the grout is cured. And the, some grouts are, for, most grouts are 72 hours. Make sure it's a polymer modified grout though. That's important. Uh, they'll help you out here with, with the grout. Because what because when you spray it, it's gonna be nice. You're gonna get it down in the sides. You can already see this is starting to dry back to its normal color. People worry with limestones because they turn yellow. Metacream would make this this color. The new one, the new water base will take it back to original. That's why that's such an important sealer. Uh, just by a quick show of hands, how many of you are interested in working with a low VOC water base floor sealer that won't change the color? Interesting? Comes in two and a half gallon containers. Most of you? No? A couple of you? I think they all like uh, the smelly stuff. Like the smelly stuff. <laughs> uh, any other questions on this? Any other questions on anything else?